We have a lot happening on this vaccine race on all different fronts. From what you're seeing so far, how optimistic are you on the timeline of when we could get a vaccine? Uh, I don't think, well, certainly I'm not in a position to give you a precise timeline. I can say that obviously the news is positive news and they're going to work very hard to getting things out fast. But if, you, if you're speaking of the United States, it would be one thing if you're speaking about the world, it presents other challenges. The good news on, on getting a lot of it out in relatively short time than you'd expect is related to what you just said, a second company. So there are going to be a third company and a fourth company. So if they all have the kind of efficacy that uh, Pfizer uh, has reported, but we haven't seen the results ourselves yet, no one has, uh, then you can expect that you'd cover many millions of people. Uh, when that would be global, I can't really even guesstimate, let alone estimate. Uh, that, that depends on a variety of things. Number one is cost. Uh, some countries and some places may not be able to afford. Uh, that's maybe a problem. People should be will pitch in, and maybe that won't be as big a problem as one could imagine. The other is the so-called cold chain, which means how well does it survive in warm weather? And the answer for any RNA vaccine is not going to be very good. So they, have, they know what they're doing. They know how to keep it uh, intact. But getting that to all places on Earth will be problematic. Uh, mm. it'll, be, it'll be a challenge. Let's put it that way. So the, the, the answer really is you can't say what you'd expect by spring of next year, the coming right. year, will be in pretty good shape. So what happens to just the world going sort of back to normal, people traveling, people going overseas, when you don't have perhaps all of these developing nations, third world countries that don't have access to the vaccines as soon as more developed economies? Well, I, I, I think no one's going to be in a position to make things go back to normal for quite some time yet. And th that's with everything going perfectly well. Uh, from the beginning, I've had a concern, I still do, that the antibodies to this particular protein, the spike protein of this virus, may not be long lasting. Uh, durability might be a problem. I'm not saying it is a problem. We don't have that information yet, but from the science that I see of this, I am, let's just say, concerned it might not be uh, durable, the antibodies. Therefore, you may have to boost uh, and maybe you'll have to boost frequently enough. And maybe each year, if this thing stays around and we don't get rid of it entirely, you'll have to be like flu, being vaccinated again, and hopefully with something that works a lot better than the flu vaccine works. And their early claims are that it does. So we, we have to keep these things in mind. Also, though it's a, they, everyone says it's safe, it's safe in, acutely when you get it. We want to be sure that in six months now, we don't see that minor infections occur and have long lasting effects or there are del deleterious effects. I don't think that's gonna happen. I'm more concerned about durability. Uh, so, you know, there, there's other good news besides this. I can tell you that in our own institute of Professor Yang Liu, uh, who came from China, works in America, works with us at our institute, made a spinoff company called Onco Immune. They're gonna be announcing um, before, I think before December, uh, a very major development in therapy. People that normally would have serious pulmonary, you know, just lung problems and facing, facing death, I think this drug is gonna make a huge difference. So that's also positive news. So there, is, there are positive things and no doubt the report from Pfizer is a positive thing. And we, there are other, but there will be other the, things coming. There's still other problems. The the 90% efficacy rate is so tantalizing, isn't it? But is there a concern that we don't have many more subsets of data from Pfizer, Brad? We don't know who was given these shots. Are they high risk? Do the, do the most vulnerable also have a 90% efficacy? Is it crucial to see that data? Well, you're, I know you're asking me because you know that you know the answer yourself. And of course, yes, uh, you're right. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen anything. So most of us really don't know. I would hope that Pfizer in giving such an announcement has taken those things into consideration.